Hello class, Mr. Sutton here, and today we're going to be talking about solving quadratics using the quadratic formula. What is the quadratic formula? The quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Quadratic formula is used to solve quadratics that you can't solve using the other methods we've talked about, whether that be factoring or solving by inspection using square roots. Uh, quadratic formula, you can use that to solve any quadratic, but it's most useful to solve those quadratics that you can't solve using other methods. So let's look at this first example here. Here I have the formula written down. Again, make sure you have this written down in your notes. And how you use this formula is we basically look and see this is the general form is that this is the a value this is the b value and this is the c value and you want to make sure you use the sign that's in front of it so a is positive 25 b is negative 20 and c is positive 4 so you want to make sure you use the appropriate sign there so in this case, we have A equals 25, B equals negative 20, C equals 4. So I'm going to go ahead and plug these things in to the formula now. So this is what it should look like when you have everything plugged in to the formula. You got to be careful here because this is negative B, but B is already negative. So really, we have negative, negative 20. And remember, uh, when you multiply a negative times a negative, it becomes positive. So that's probably going to be the first thing we're going to do is change that to positive 20. Uh, and then we have negative 20 squared minus 4 times 25 times 4. And then 2 times 25 here on the bottom. So next thing you want to do is make sure you simplify this using correct order of operations. So I'm going to go through this here. First thing I'm going to do is change this to positive 20 plus or minus and then see what I can do underneath this square root. Negative 20 squared would be positive 400. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then we have negative 4 times 25 times 4. So let's go ahead and see what that is. 4 times 25 times 4 is also 400. So make sure you, this stays negative. It's negative 4 times 25 times 4, so that's negative 400. Don't lose that minus sign in there. And then we have 20, 2 times 25 on the bottom, which is 50. So underneath the radical, we have 400 minus 400. That's 0. So we got 20 plus or minus square root of 0 over 50. Square root of 0 is just 0. So we don't have to worry about that. 20 plus or minus 0, nothing changes there. So really, we just have 20 over 50 here, which simplifies to 2 over 5. So that is our only solution here, 2 over 5. So let's go ahead and look at the next one. So this time we have 18z squared minus 31z plus 12 equals negative 2z. So notice the difference about this one compared to the last one. Last one was already set up to equal 0. This time it's not set up to equal zero. So one thing to note about the quadratic formula is you got to make sure you have it set equal to zero first. So for this one, we will have to add the 2z squared to the other side. So let's go ahead and do that. So I added 2z squared to both sides. So now we get 20z squared minus 31z plus 12 equals zero. So in this case, A is 20. B is negative 31, and C is 12. 
So if we're looking, if we're thinking about our formula, our formula, which I went ahead and rewrote right there. So we want to plug in 20 for A, negative 31 for B, and 12 for C. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So this is what you should get when you plug everything in. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to want to do is I have negative, negative 31. So I'm going to change that to a positive 31 plus or minus square root of 31 squared, or excuse me, negative 31 squared is a positive 961. And then we have negative 4 times 20 times 12. So what is that? That is negative 960. And then 2 times 20 on the bottom is 40. So the next thing we can do is simplify underneath the radical. So 31 plus or minus 961 minus 960 is just 1. So this just becomes square root of 1 over 40. The square root of 1 is 1, right? So because 1 times 1 is 1. So we have 31 plus or minus 1 over 40. So here is where we could possibly, where we have two solutions, because we have to think about 31 plus 1 over 40 and 31 minus 1 over 40. So 31 plus 1 over 40 is 32 over 40 which we can simplify that 32 over 40 is uh, you can divide both of these by 8 so that would be 4 over 5 and then 31 minus 1 over 40 31 minus 1 is 30 over 40 and then we can divide both of these by 10 so that gives us 3 over 4 so here are the two answers 4 over 5 and 3 over 4. So last problem we did, we had a 0 here, so we there was no need to split it up into two different answers here. But this one, we have a 1 here, so now we have to actually think about how this plus or minus affects our solution. So that's when we split it up into 31 plus 1 and 31 minus 1, and then we can simplify from there. So final answer is 4 over 5 and 3 over 4. All right, let's go ahead and look at this one. Solve the equations, solve the equation for all real solutions in simplest form. So this is like the last one where first thing we have to do is set it equal to zero. So I went ahead and subtracted four V squared on both sides. So nine V squared minus four V squared is five V squared plus 11 V plus five. So our A value is five, our B value is 11, and our C value is five. So let's go ahead and plug those in to the quadratic formula. All right, so this is what you should get after plugging in all the values into your quadratic formula. So let's go ahead and start to simplify here. So this time we just have negative 11 out in front, plus or minus 11 squared is 121. And then negative 4 times 5 times 5 is negative 100. And then 2 times 5 is 10. So the next thing we can do is simplify underneath the radical. So negative 11 plus or minus... 121 minus 100 is 21, so square root of 21. And then 10, still on the denominator. So now we have to try to figure out if we can simplify this radical, square root of 21. Does that simplify at all? It does not. Uh, so if you, if you try to factorize this, you have 3 
and seven, and then both of those are prime. So nothing that can be pulled out of that. So this is really our final answer, 11 plus or minus square root of 21 over 10. Now you can also give a decimal approximation. You can type in in your calculator separately, negative 11 plus square root 21 over 10. So you would first type in negative 11 plus square root of 21, and then divide that by 10 uh, and see what that is approximately. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I got um, negative 0.6, Four and uh, one seven four two four three one, uh, but I'll just leave it there. Uh, and then I'm going to do the same thing for negative 11 minus 21 over 10. And we want to make sure we use the approximately symbol because we are approximating here. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in the calculator and see what I get. And for this one, I got negative one point. Five five eight two five seven five six nine. Uh, so I'm going to round that to negative one point five six. All right. So a couple of different ways you can represent your answer. This answer right here is the best answer. This is the most accurate answer. This negative 11 plus or minus square root of 21 over 10, even though that doesn't look nice, this tells us exactly what the answer is. These answers are decimal approximations, uh, so they're not exact, uh, but you want to be able to uh, find both answers, either this one or the decimal approximation, because sometimes you'll be asked to give an exact answer. Sometimes you'll be asked to give a decimal approximation rounded to some amount so you want to be able to do both. So make sure you are able to calculate this in your calculator. If you are not, uh, make sure you're talking to your teacher uh, to make sure you can figure out how to use your calculator to get these correct decimal approximations. Um, but if you're asked for an exact answer, you just want to give this answer here. So let's go ahead and look at the next one. Solve the equation for all real solutions in simplest form. Uh, so once again, we have to solve for zero. So this time we have to subtract five on both sides. And then four minus five is negative one. So A in this case would be one, B would be negative six, and C would be negative one. So I'm going to go ahead and plug these into the quadratic formula now. So this is what you should get when you plug it all in. So I'm going to go ahead and start simplifying. Negative negative 6 becomes positive 6. Negative 6 squared is positive 36. And then we have negative 4 times 1 times negative 1. So this becomes plus 4 now. And then 2 times 1 is 2. So... Simplifying the radical here, we have 36 plus 4 is 40, so 6 plus or minus square root of 40 over 2. Now we want to see if we can simplify this radical at all. So, so the square root of 40 does simplify, and the way... I would do it is I would think of this as, let me do it over here, square root of 40 is equivalent to square root of 4 times 10. So that's the same as square root of 4 times the square root of 10. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 10, can't simplify that. So Square root of 40 is the same as 2 root 10. So that is how that simplifies, and that's kind of the way I think about it. So you have 6 plus or minus 2 root 10 over 2. Now this is where uh, 
I, I see a lot of students struggle is how to simplify from here. So, so the next thing we can do is we can reduce this two with what we have up here. And one thing I want to point out is you cannot reduce this two with this 10 underneath the radical. That's where I see a lot of mistakes or even I'll see students on this previous step try to reduce this to with this 40. We can't do that either. Uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure you simplify the radical first and then you can reduce this 6 and the 2 and you can reduce the number out in front with the 2. So what this turns into is 3 plus or minus, and this two becomes a one root 10, or you can just write it as three plus or minus root 10, right? So if it helps you to visualize how that simplify is you can split this up into two fractions. You can say six over two plus or minus two root 10 over two, and then you can see six over two becomes three, and 2 root 10 over 2, you can see the 2's simplify. So you end up with 3 plus or minus root 10. So if you're ever uh, struggling with simplifying this last step with the denominator, uh, try to split it up into two fractions. I think that way is easier to see for a lot of people. So final answer is 3 plus or minus root 10. Nothing else we can do to simplify there. We can give our decimal approximations. Uh, 3 plus root 10 and 3 minus root 10. So if we are asked for that, and again, we want to make sure we use our approximate symbols here. If we're asked for that, uh, make sure you put those in your calculator. I'm going to do that now. You can go ahead and check your answer with me. So for 3 plus root 10, I got 6.16. And for 3 minus root 10, I got negative 0.16. And rounding to the nearest hundredths place. Um, if you have the TI-30 uh, calculator, if you're plugging these in and you're wondering why you're not getting decimal approximations and you're just getting the same thing spit back to you, all you have to do is next press the button underneath the plus sign that has the two arrows going left and going right, and that converts it to a decimal. So if you're wondering why that is, uh, but that is quadratic formula. Uh, so if you have any questions about this, make sure you are asking your teacher for help or coming to office hours. Have a good day.